Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover what rational numbers are. Now simply put, rational numbers are numbers that can be written as a fraction, specifically a fraction of two integers. So the numerator must be an integer and the denominator must be an integer. Now fractions can be written as decimals. So anything in decimal form that either terminates, so cuts off, or repeats, so continues on forever in some type of pattern, those are rational numbers. This may all seem confusing at first, but as we go through our examples, this will all make a lot more sense. So any number that can be written as a fraction of two integers, so the numerator must be an integer and the denominator must be an integer, that's going to be a rational number. Now remember, integers include positive and negative numbers and zero. Decimals and fractions are not included. Now one thing I do want to mention, the denominator cannot be zero because that will give us a value that is undefined. That's why zero is crossed off for the denominator. So something to keep in mind. Let's jump into our examples, starting with number one, where we have six. So we have a whole number here. Can we write six as a fraction of two integers? Yes. For example, we can write six over one, that equals six. Or 12 over two, that equals six. 36 over six, that equals six. All of those examples equal six. So six can be written as a fraction of two integers. So it's a rational number. And all whole numbers are going to be rational. What about negative six? What about a negative number? Can we write this as a fraction of two integers? Yes, negative six over one equals negative six, or negative 18 over three equals negative six. So negative six is a rational number as well. Let's move on to number two, where we have a decimal, seven tenths. Is this rational? Well, it is a terminating decimal, it cuts off, so right away we can see that this is rational. But can it be written as a fraction of two integers? Yes, 7 tenths can be written as 7 over 10. That equals 7 tenths. Or 21 over 30 equals 7 tenths. Or even 70 over 100 equals 7 tenths. So 7 tenths can be written as a fraction of two integers. So it's rational. And just like we talked about in number one, a negative so negative 7 tenths, that's rational as well. We can write this as negative 7 tenths. So any terminating decimals are going to be rational. Let's move on to number three, where we have two and 75 hundredths. Similar to number two, we have a terminating decimal. So right away, we can tell that this is rational. But how do we write this as a fraction of two integers? Well, we can write this as 275 over 100. Or we can even use the simplified version of that fraction, 11 over four. So both of those are examples of two and 75 hundredths written as a fraction of two integers. Now, just like numbers one and two, negative two and 75 hundredths is rational as well. We can write that as a fraction of two integers. Let's move on to number four, where we have zero. Is zero rational? Yes, we can write zero as a fraction of two integers. Zero over one equals zero. Zero over 25 equals zero. 0 over 100 equals 0. So yes, we can write 0 as a fraction of two integers. 0 is rational. Now, like I mentioned earlier in the video, if we have 0 in the denominator, though, so let's just say 1 over 0, this does not equal 0. 0 in the denominator gives us a value that is undefined. So that's not going to be rational. 
So again, something to keep in mind. Let's move on to number five, where we have a repeating decimal. So 0 0.3 repeating. This bar right here, this means we have 0 0.3 and this three continues on forever. So is this rational? Are repeating decimals rational? Can we write this as a fraction of two integers? Yes. We can actually write any repeating decimal as a fraction of two integers. For example, a fraction of two integers that equals 0 0.3 repeating, well, one third or three ninths. So any repeating decimals are rational. Even something that has multiple digits that repeat will be rational. So for example, something like 0 0.181818, and this continues on. So 18 repeating. We have a pattern here. We have something that repeats. So this is rational. Fractional form, let's come below here. So 0 0.18 repeating, we can do 18 over 99 or even two over 11. Next, for number six, we have one fourth. Well, this is already a fraction. The numerator is one, which is an integer, and the denominator is four, which is an integer. So this is rational. Now let's look at the decimal form as well. One fourth equals 25 hundredths, which is a terminating decimal. So we can see that this is a rational number that way as well. Let's move on to number seven, where we have the square root of 25. Well, the square root of 25, that equals five. So with the square root of 25 giving us the value of five, is five rational? Yes. Five is a whole number, and we can write it as a fraction of two integers. Five over one, 50 over 10, so on and so forth. So the square root of 25 is rational. Lastly, let's move on to number eight. And at this point, you may be thinking, well, what's an example of something that's not rational? Well, the square root of three gives us a value that is not rational. If we plug this into a calculator, we get 1.73205, and this continues on forever. Now this decimal does not repeat, it doesn't have a pattern, and again, it continues on forever. So the decimal form doesn't terminate or repeat. So there is no way for us to write this as a fraction of two integers. So this is not rational. Again, there's no way for us to write this as a fraction of two integers. But you may be thinking, can't we just write this as the square root of three over one? That's a fraction. Yes, it is a fraction, but remember, a rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction of two integers. And this numerator is not an integer. Again, the numerator and denominator have to be an integer for it to be rational. The square root of three is not rational. It's what we call irrational. We cannot write it as a fraction of two integers. And going off of this, any time we take the square root of something that is not a perfect square, or a cube root of something that is not a perfect cube, and so on, we get an irrational number. And there are other examples of irrational numbers as well. We will go over those in another video. That link is down in the description. So as far as rational numbers go, if we can write it as a fraction of two integers, then that number is rational. If the decimal form either terminates or repeats, that also shows that we have a rational number. So there you have it. There's an explanation of what rational numbers are. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.